Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm really glad to have you here today. And on today's episode, I have the Kodiak 100 by Simwork Studio. And this one is the amphibian version. So it is on floats, just floating away on the backside of our campsite. And for in case you're wondering where we are, I do not know. We are over on the west coast of New Zealand. I was actually flying along and I saw this little island right off the coast. The mainland is behind our airplane. And I thought it would be a perfect place to set up camp and to film this video. So here we are. And so for this video, I'm going to be doing a kind of a overview on water operations in the Kodiak 100. I did make a tutorial on the wheeled version a while back. So this one's not going to be as, I guess, in depth as that tutorial, but it's going to be a very basic tutorial overview of water operations in the Kodiak 100. And so with that, it's enough sitting here on land. Let's go get our sea legs and take this thing out for a ride. All right, so here we are in the Flodiac. We're going to leave our campsite set up today. And so for this flight, once again, it's just going to be a real kind of brief overlook at how to fly this thing on the water. Um, I know when I first got it, I'm not a seaplane guy. I had a lot of difficulties like landing it, taking it off. So I watched a bunch of videos on real Kodiaks, like how to fly them in the water, how to land them in the water. And so I want to make a video on it just to kind of help someone else like me that's just struggling to like perfect flying this thing. So we got our window open. Um, once we fire it up, we're going to have our co-pilot here hop out of the airplane and push us away from the beach here. Let's go ahead and get the aircraft fired up. So first, let's actually come down here. So our water rudder is this lever right here beside our seat. There is an armrest. You might have to move it. So a water rudder is up, which I'm going to leave it in the up position for now since we're beached. And then our gear is also up, which we're not going to touch that. Then coming up here, um, I will lock my seat because our co-pilot's going to hop out. We'll go ahead and bring the fuel levers down to the green push the fuel into the firewall and then this is something that is added to the aircraft right here this will yell at us it should yell at us here in a minute to tell us that our gear is up for water operations and to silence it to silence it you just hit the cancel button either for water or for runway depending if your gear is up or if it's down so let's go ahead and fire the airplane up. We got our beacon light on because we'll be starting up here momentarily. Uh, let's hit enter. All right, so we got 25 volts on the battery. That's good. Uh, let's go to lean. We got 700 pounds of fuel remaining. That's good for me. All right. So we'll put it back on lean. Oh, actually, we'll put it on system so I can watch the battery. Then we're going to just shimmy over here to the center. And so now what we'll do is we're going to put the... Oh, keynote, since we're on water, make sure your bypass is on. This guy right here. We want the bypass on to prevent any water from getting ingested by the engine. So make sure that's on. So our bypass is on. We can verify it by seeing engine inlet bypass. So we know it's up. So then we're going to turn our fuel pump into the on position. Ignition can go on. And then for the starter switch, we're going to go into low slash motor because we are not using ground power. If we had ground power, we'd go to high. Or if we needed to cool our ITT down because we just finished a flight, we'd pump it up into high. But we want to start it with no ground power, so we're going to push that down into low. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start on the timer, low. And now what we're doing is we're looking for 14 on our NG here. So there's 14. We'll bring the fuel condition lever to idle, to low idle. And now we're just going to monitor. So torque's coming alive. ITT's climbing. Just peaked at 563, so we're good there. 
ITT's up, and we got 53 on the NG. So we got a good start, so we'll go ahead and turn the starter and the ignition off, flip our generator and alternator on. Go ahead and turn our nav lights on now. Get our avionics up and our auxiliary bus up as well. And that's weird. I've never seen it say it doesn't know what the temperature is. I think, I think our air conditioning's broken. So if this was yelling at us, gear up for water, we just hit cancel. It's not yelling at us. So we're going to put that to standby just so we don't get the wine. Close this window up. And we're not going to bring the prop up until we actually get ready to go because if we were free floating in the water and we bring the prop out of feather, it's going to start carrying us away. And like I said, right now we're beached. So we're just going to go over everything else real quick. Let's see, it's 9 degrees. So I'll leave our pedos off. Beacon. All right. And so what we'll do now is I will let the co-pilot hop out and unbeach us from the shore and then we'll get on our way. All right, so our co-pilot did a great job at um, unbeaching us. Yeah, um, we're, we're in there pretty good. It took him a minute. So now that we are free from the land, uh, we'll go ahead, make we'll get him locked in. Still got two greens, we're locked in. Our passengers have been briefed and we're gonna start taxiing soon so we will go ahead and we'll taxi and take off soon so we'll go ahead and put the ox pump in on ignition off st starter is off alternator generator are on we'll go ahead and turn on our strobes I like to have the taxi on and landing and pulse nine degrees we shouldn't need the pedo um, we do want to maintain full black back pressure while we're in the water that way we don't submarine the front of the floats. And then we want to get our trim in. We'll put that about right, uh, we, we're pretty aft heavy, so we'll actually go about flat. Rudder trim, I'll kick it out three. That should be good. Um, we're right about sea level. Maybe we could bump that down one. Eh. That might be better right there. And so with that, we should be ready to go now. So I will drop the water rudder in. I have it short keyed on my joystick, but you can also press it. So now our water rudder is down so we can steer. And the first thing we're going to go over is taxiing on the water. So we're going to want to keep it in low idle until we are ready to take off. We'll go ahead and bring our props all the way forward. There it is, coming out a feather. And so now we're gonna start, we should start moving along here. Uh, we might need to just encourage it a little, so let's give it just a little bit of forward thrust. There we go, now we're moving. So obviously you can taxi like normal, where, you know, you're just giving it low power and you're in low idle, prop full forward. And you want to maintain that constant back pressure on the joystick or on your yoke. But we can also do like a step taxi, which is more of a high speed taxi, where we're actually on the step of the float. So we'll bring it up to, uh, let's see about 500 on the torque will do us. We'll get us into a good step taxi. So our airspeed's coming up. Um, still maintaining full back pressure. And there we are up on the step now. Which I know earlier when I did this, uh, below 34 knots or so, we kept having a bunch of jumping around. But I'm going to bring the water rudder up now. 
So our water rudder is coming up. And so now we can just kind of taxi around on the water at a higher speed. And there's where it does that weird glitch because it's the sim. Yeah, so we got our water rudder up and we're just taxiing on the step of the float instead of being pretty much just squatting in the water. Now we're just more or less hydroplaning. So go ahead, bring the thrust back. Still maintain that constant back pressure. You just want to hold that control stick or yoke all the way back until you're ready to fly. Which now, I think we're ready to fly. So there's really nothing too much different than flying the airplane as normal. We'll bring our flaps down to 20. So they're there on 20. We'll go ahead and bring this up to high idle because we're about, we're getting ready to take off. We'll let that spool up. We still got a fuel pump on, ignition off, starter is off, generator, generator and alternator are on. Bypass, remember the bypass, that's important because you don't want any water getting into the engine. We got all of our lights on, uh, it's 9 degrees out, shouldn't need the pitos, so we are good to go. We've already checked our flight controls before we left. And so see, conf we got full back pressure on the yoke. So for takeoff, what we're going to do is we're just going to go straight ahead of us. There's no obstacles. We're going to do a maximum torque takeoff. We're going to keep constant back pressure on the yoke until about 45, 50 knots. Then we're going to ease up on our back pressure and pretty much let the airplane climb itself away. If we had any obstacles in front of us, we would maintain just like in the normal Kodiak, probably about 73 until we clear our obstacles, then accelerate, remove our flaps and we'll bring the prop back down to 2000 to give the engine a break. So with that, let's go ahead and give it maximum torque, keeping full back pressure on the yoke. All right, airspeed's alive. We're up on the step, need that right rudder because it's a Kodiak and it requires all of it. There's 45, so I'm gonna ease off the yoke, ease off the controls. We should start lifting up, there we go. Nice and easy. So let's go ahead and pitch the nose down because we know there's no obstacles in front of us. There's 73. At 85, I'll bring up our flaps to notch one. There's 85, so flaps go into notch one. And then at 105, I'll clean up the airplane. So there's 105, so we're clean up the airplane. And then we'll We'll work on accelerating up to about 115 to do our climb. And we're going to bring the prop back to about 2,000 RPM, which I've noticed is right about the bottom of the P. That gets us pretty close. You might have to make a little bit of adjustments. But there we go. Now we're flying in the, in the Flodiac. So we'll go ahead and turn. Uh, we want to remember to bring our trim up. If we keep that heavy nose down trim, we won't be able to properly land the aircraft. You just won't have the elevator authority to do it. I'm just going to cruise right about 500 feet, so we don't need to go too fast. And we can actually work on descending. That clicking is the trim for the elevator based on my um, shortcut I have on my joystick. And so that right there is the little island we just came from. And we're pretty much going to stick around here. We'll do a flyby of our campsite. I've, I've never actually left the campsite unpacked and then flown away from it. So I'm kind of curious to know if we can see it from 500 feet up. I don't know how their rendering does. Let's see, we almost got the airplane trimmed out to where we want it. Uh, that was, I think, too much nose up. So right in front of us is the mainland of the South Island of New Zealand. And this is where our campsite was. Um, once again, I'm not sure where exactly it is. Um, I'll, if I remember, I'll get a screenshot from a little nav map and put it in here to show you where exactly we are. In case you want to come visit, because it, it's gorgeous. Let's see if we can see camp. Uh, we're descending a little, so let's fix that. Oh yeah, there's there's camp right there. I see at least one tent. I see at least the bright orange tent right off the wingtip. There it goes. 
that's cool so we'll come out here just a little bit and then we will start getting the airplane ready for landing so I still do the flaps the same as I have always flown the Kodiak with the flaps where at 115 I give it notch one so I'm gonna verify our trim yep trim looks pretty good let's pitch the nose down just a little bit but at 105 I would normally do flaps in the second notch which should be 20 degrees but I don't want to go to 20 degrees yet I want to get a little bit more distance I'm going to go ahead and increase our power. We're getting ready to land, so I'm going to bring the prop back up into full RPM. And then, once again, we want to keep bypass on. So our bypass is right down here. It's still on because we're going to be doing water ops. So we're just going to leave it on until we're not going to land on the water anymore. We should be far enough away. I'll do just a little bit of a left-hand turn to swing out. And then we'll go ahead and swing back to the right. And we'll work on slowing her down. There's 105, so flaps 20. Second notch. And at 90, we'll try and maintain 95 until we're ready to go full flaps. So then we'll just verify real quick. Green and green, locked and locked. Everything's full, except for our throttle. Our thrust, I guess, which we are controlling right now. So there's our island. I kind of want to just stick close to it. So there's 95 knots. We're going to go ahead and give it our final notch of flaps. And then what we're going to do is try and straighten her out. And what we're looking to do here for landing is we want to try and fly at about 65 knots and a descent rate of approximately 300 feet per minute. And what I've seen from instructors teaching people on the YouTube is you just got to be real patient with it let the airplane just gently come down to a rest and it seems like you want to hold the nose up about five probably closer to seven degrees um, it's kind of a tricky spot to maintain if to be honest I've, I'm still not very good at it I'm a lot better than I was when I first started gotta give it some more power here which we we can work on descending a little bit better so let's get a little bit, we're just flying level now. We're just doing slow flight. Let's get the airplane coming down. This airplane's coming down. We're about 100 feet off the deck. So we'll go ahead and start bringing the nose up. And now we're climbing again. All right, so airplane's dropping. So there's 60 and we're at 300. So you just want to keep the airplane out of a stall, stay coordinated and maintain about 300 feet per minute. And try and aim for that like seven degrees and the horizon till we touch down. And just a little bit more power. And about on the water, there's, we're on the water, full back pressure and we go into beta. So we go into beta until the airplane starts to bring the front end of the floats down and then we ease out of it. And then we maintain that full back pressure on the yoke and we want to go down into low idle until we're ready to take off again. And that's pretty much water ops. So we'll go ahead and do a little bit of a step taxi past our camp real quick. Go ahead and bring this up. We'll clean up our airplane, bring flaps all the way up. That way we don't accidentally take off. So now we will work on gaining some speed. The water rudder is still up because we're going to do kind of a high speed taxi here on the steps. And there we are. And so now let's kind of cruise past our campsite like we're a little jet boat. That just sounds like fun. So right now I got about 550 it looks like on the torque and we're just doing a real nice cruise here and there's where I said sometimes it gets a little finicky where you just start hopping around this 34 knots mark I don't know why it likes to do that but it does 
Oh, I can already see the um, fire from our campsite. Let's go ahead and slow it down just so that way we don't got to deal with all that hopping. Which it should hop again in a second as we slow down. Yeah, there's our campsite, so that's cool. I'm going to go ahead and hop back down. We'll go ahead and go to flaps 20. Water rudder's up. Gear is up. Green, green, locked, locked. Ox pump is still on, never turned it off. We can verify that up right there, bypass on. We'll go ahead and bring the mixture up to, not the mixture, the fuel condition up to high. And it looks like our barometric pressure changed a bit, so let's just bump that back down. And we're ready to go flying. So we'll go ahead and bring it up to maximum torque. We'll watch that rudder. And as we get to about 45, we'll just ease off the back pressure on the... Oh, I forgot to adjust our trim. So we really want to ease off the back pressure. And, yeah. One thing I forgot that's going to be bad for the tutorial. Don't forget to adjust your trim. I realized that as we were starting to fly, but we still took off pretty all right. We took off a bit late. What they say in the instructional videos is you should be able to rotate about 55 knots. And we were, I think we rotated almost at like 75. And then as you could see, the nose wanted to climb a bunch because I never adjusted that trim. And I know with how I loaded the airplane, we are fairly aft heavy. So we want to go ahead, we're climbing up through 105. We'll go ahead and bring the prop back, not the mixture. Well, not the fuel condition. Bring the prop back about to the bottom of the P on prop. And as you, and if you can see, uh, I was just at 2,000, dropped down to 1,990. But it gets us pretty close to 2,000 RPM. And I'll bring the thrust back just a little bit because we're right here at 500 where I want to be. And we'll do it again. We'll probably do a total of three water landings and takeoffs just for good measure. That way you can see this does actually kind of work if, if, if you don't, like, you know, forget to set your trim and all that other fun stuff that you should do, but I forgot. So we already whizzed past our campsite once, so we'll just stay back out here. We're at 115. I don't want to go too much faster than that, so we'll go ahead and drop in that, our first notch of flaps. And just give it a little bit of thrust so we don't descend too much. Well, I mean, so we don't decelerate too much. Try and just maintain pretty close to 500. Right about 500 feet, which is where we are. We'll just maintain that. And we'll fly out for just a little bit. And as we turn um, base from our downwind here, we'll go ahead and drop flaps 20. And then when we turn for our final, we will drop the final notch of flaps. So we'll just want to slow down accordingly, so that way we can achieve that as planned. Just want to gain a little more distance uh, when we're climbing a little bit. And we should be good actually to do it now, so we'll back off the throttle. Go ahead and bring the prop to full. We'll descend a little bit. At 105 we'll drop flaps 20. And we're descending too fast now. So there's 105, flaps 20. And I'll actually let us slow down to about 85 before I drop the next notch of flaps in. Alright, so we're at 90. We'll go ahead and drop final notch of flaps, start setting up for our landing. Get some right rudder in so we stay coordinated. Bring throttle up just a little bit. Let ourselves come down a little bit closer to the water. And once again, we're aiming for about 60, 65 knots and the nose on the horizon. So we're 100 feet above, so let's get in that configuration. And we want to be descending at about 300 feet per minute as we touch the water. And try not to stall. And there we are, we're down. 
maintain full back pressure on the yoke. Then we'll go into beta until we bring the front floats down. Then ease out of beta. And we're golden. So now we'll leave it in flaps 20 and we'll also leave it in high idle and full prop because we're gonna I'm gonna try something new for this one. But first, let's adjust trim like I messed up last time. So we got our trim, it's about level. I wanna give it five kicks out to the right on our rudder trim. We're gonna try and transition from a step taxi to flying. I haven't done this before, so this could end up badly. But I saw on YouTube, and when the video is in the real Kodiak on floats, and they made it look really, really easy. So we're gonna give it a try. I'm probably gonna mess this up. I'm just gonna go like this so we can see a little better. And so, well, I actually gave it a little bit too much rudder, it looks like. So we're gonna bring it up just a little bit. There's 40. Bring it up a little more, 45. We'll ease off our back pressure on the yoke. Let's see if we can find this sweet spot between being a boat and being an airplane. So keep bringing the throttle up just barely, just inching it forward. We're up about 1200 right now. There's 55 knots. We should be able to become an airplane if we give it just a little bit more back pressure. There's 60. We're hopping. And we're an airplane. And we're a boat now. We should have gave it just a little bit more throttle. All right. Let's give it a little bit more so we maintain being an airplane this go around. Don't become a boat again. Let's give it a little bit more right rudder. And we'll go ahead, pitch down for 73. There's 73, now let's go up to 85 so we can bring up our first notch of flaps. Well, technically our second notch. And there's 85, so flaps 10. We're descending a little bit. Let's not go back into the water. And we'll go ahead and just give it full thrust so that way we don't end up descending into the water and we'll pitch down a little bit hit 105 and now we got a clean airplane which I'm going to kick our rudder just two in because I know on landing we need quite a bit to maintain our slow speeds with quite a bit of torque I was trying to get our trim back up to where I want it without making the airplane do anything super crazy by giving it too much all at once. Here we are at 400 feet. Uh, I never did bring the prop back this go around. That's okay. We're going to be landing again here real soon. So I'm not terribly concerned about that. There's where our campsite is. And we're right about where we want to be. We need a little bit more nose down. Just to maintain 500. And I also want to slow up some as we were sailing right past our island. But yeah, this is actually super fun to fly. And I, I, after I had some very terrible landings and takeoffs when I first got this airplane, and that's why I started doing a lot of research on the real one and how you fly the real one. And once I figured it out, it became a lot more fun. Cause there were some times we were just porpoising so bad on the water, the front end would hit. We were submarining the front end of the aircraft into the water. It, it was not good. There's 105 and we're turning base, so we'll go ahead and drop slap 20. Kind of maintain our speed, make sure prop and fuel condition are all the way set. And I held down the key binding, so they should be. 
And we'll go ahead and maintain a descent. I'm going to try leaving throttle at 900 for this approach and see if we do a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and drop full flaps now. And we're just going to leave the thrust where it is. So we're going to just keep a nice descent. And we're actually pretty coordinated, which I want to, which I like seeing. So I'm actually going to bump it up to about 1,100 or so. So there's 100. So let's go ahead and start pitching the airplane up. Give it a little bit more thrust. That might have been too much. Just a little bit more right rudder. And we got our nose to the horizon, slowing down. Should start yelling at us for stall in a second. Oh, that one was beautiful. That was perfect. We barely even porpoised. I'm I'm really glad that that third landing worked out so well. That was a beautiful landing. I don't know what you guys thought, but that you know what they say, third time's a charm, right? So what we did is we maintained about 1100-ish on the landing and right about 7 degrees nose on the horizon. I was Where I was looking is I was looking right at this area, keeping that on our horizon. And we actually did very, very well. I'm very happy with that one. We, we should end it on that really high note, right? So let's go ahead. Oh, it's starting to rain. Let's go ahead, taxi back in because now it's raining. Which I forgot to take us out of high idle. Now we're in low idle for the taxi. That's what we want. And let's go back to base. Alright everyone, so here we are back in the cockpit. Um, I taxied us up as you would have saw, and then I beached us a little bit early, so I had to have our co-pilot here who is unhappy with us get out and give us a little push. And by push, yeah, it was a lot of pushing. I just sat here, looked pretty, kept the prop spinning. You know, what, what, what good captains do, right? And so what we did, the only thing we really changed was we stayed in low idle, brought the prop back to feather, that way we wouldn't start taking off from them, and then leave them swimming. And so now we need to let the engine cool down, so we'll go ahead and stop our timer, reset, start it. We need to let it cool down for one minute. That's in the idle position, but we can for sure go ahead and shut off. We'll go ahead and turn off our air conditioning. Then we will shut off the aux bus. We can turn that pesky fuel pump off. Same with the generator and the alternator. Also our strobes, taxi and landing can go off. I don't know why he stayed locked in. He doesn't need to be locked in anymore. So flaps are up. We'll just verify water rudder still up. Gear is up. And looks like we got 25 more seconds. Uh, you can kind of see it. But there is camp, once again, he, kudos to you man, pat on the back, pat, pat, pat. Good work pushing us in. You know, it's like when you get stuck in the snow, someone's got to drive the car, but someone's got to push, right? Unfortunately, it is two's job. And there we go, there's one minute, so go ahead, hit stop. Bring the condition lever back to cutoff. Then I like to wait for the prop to stop to actually shut power off. So it's still spinning. You, you probably really don't have to, but I like to have the prop stop. So there it is. Prop is stopped. Go ahead and flip the master off. I like to leave the beacon and the nav on because you, this plane, there's no real checklist to actually 
firing the airplane obviously there's a checklist but it's not like an airliner where you got to do about 100 things before you fire the airplane up so we really don't need to um man words are hard we really don't it doesn't matter if i leave this on and off because it's made you saw how easy it is to start when i hit the battery on we are prepping to start the aircraft and why did he close his door he he didn't want to see us anymore with that, um, I'm going to go ahead, open up the window. I'm going to go open up the rear door, and I'll meet you guys over at the campsite. All right, so here we are back at camp. I left the front door open and opened up the rear door. Just, you know, air it out, keep it nice and breezy in there. It, it's got to smell beautiful out here, right? I mean, we got the rain, the water, the food cooking on the fire. You know, j let's just make the airplane smell like a nice weekend, right? So with that... I hope you guys enjoyed this video, as always. If you want to see a more in-depth tutorial, let me know. I can make another one. Uh, I just wanted to do this kind of weird, real quick water operations video on the Flodiac. Because I know that was something I really wanted when I first got this airplane, and I, I kept, like, crashing on takeoff. Or on landing. It, it was bad. It was very bad. You'd think I've never flown this airplane before in my life. And so, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let me know down below what I did wrong, what I did right, what you'd like to see, which you don't want to see. I want, I want your feedback. I value it. You guys are awesome. I'm so glad all of you are here. And I appreciate every time you like, every time you subscribe, every time you leave a comment. I love to hear from you guys. And I, I really enjoy doing this. So, I hope you enjoy watching it. Whether you click through, watch the whole thing... Just click down on the timestamps, or maybe maybe you're asleep right now. And you just happen to leave YouTube on, and somehow the universe has brought us together at this point in time. If so, I appreciate you. No matter how you got here, I appreciate all of you. Let me know what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want to see, what you want to hear. What airplanes do you want to see? Do you, want, do you want a more in-depth tutorial? Let me know. I would love to find out what you want. And with that, before I just continue to ramble the night away, I will see you guys on the next one. Thank you all, and I hope you guys stay awesome.